Cappadocia, Turkey. We are being told that the funny shaped, rather large stone pillars were fashioned by the elements who worked hard for millions and millions of years. So I wonder why during these endless millions of years not even a single of them managed to fall down and collapse. I mean, they are made of really like something very soft. One must really stretch one's imagination to call it really a stone. It's more like some sort of powder. It is that soft and on the top of that they are pretty tall, these pillars. And they're in the middle of a very active seismic region as entire Turkey where earthquakes are pretty common. And that's not even the worst. Do you see the neat horizontal layers? The strata of allegedly volcanic ash? Initially, it looks like innocent, so-called natural formations. Natural meaning without intelligent design, just a play of elements, as we are told in school. But as we walked around for a few days in these valleys in Cappadocia, we found a number of clues which made us highly inclined to reevaluate our opinion of what these layers are all about. Like, for example, I'd really like to know what are chopped pieces of fresh wood doing in this allegedly millions of years old layers. Not only is the wood as fresh as brand new, but also the pieces into which it was chopped are often of a absolutely uniform size. On top of that, the chopped wood is so well mixed with the rest of the ingredients that its density always remains the same in all parts of this huge layer. <laughs> The official story of how this tufa stone came into being, although it doesn't look like a stone to many people as well, it's like some sort of powder, but anyway, let's call it stone for now, and allegedly it was blown out, spitted out by a volcano many, many thousands of years ago, there are no active volcanoes in this uh, area now, not at all but there were, there must have been, uh, that's the official story again, many many millions of years ago and so they spitted out all this ash and it covered significant parts of Turkey even all the way to Bulgaria we would see the same tufa 
rocks, stone, and officially they are the same, with the same origin. There were these very same mushrooms, not so well shaped, but the same story, so it's quite a big region. And this region, spreading over countries, must have had a whole lot of volcanic activity, according to the mainstream story, so that all this got formed. But what I'm asking myself is uh, how come, it's, if this really happened so many millions of years ago, how come the wood inside is as fresh as brand new? Yes, many pieces of such wood indeed look like dead corals or maybe petrified wood, as the official story suggests, but it is not at all difficult to find absolutely fresh wood. I mean, it looks like that, it feels like that, it, it, it's got, I mean, the typical wood structure inside. It should have decomposed a very long time ago. The case with the well-preserved dinosaur remains is very similar. Again? <laughs> Mainstream biologists and archaeologists find well-preserved tissues from dinosaurs which must have decomposed millions of years ago. There's no question that it should be in such good condition if the stories they are telling us are true. And yet, when this topic is about to be raised at prestigious conferences or the pages of famous scientific publications, Something always happens, and those who want to raise this question are somehow silenced, and life goes on, as if the stories we are told by the penguins about our geological past are confirmed by the findings on the field, which is not the case, though, like this fresh wood which would have been petrified by the pressure, by the temperature, by time, by so many things, even if their stories were true. But it is not. The next question is, who chopped the wood into more or less uniform pieces? The penguins blame it all, of course, on the volcanoes. What else? And it is true that explosions can chop things up. But it's a bit hard to believe that they would do it so uniformly. There should have been some bigger parts of trees remaining here and there under normal conditions. Like, for example, this specimen from the U.S., it's very hard to believe that these volcanoes here in Turkey and in the area of the Balkans, that they didn't make any trees fall down and remain as trees. They didn't leave any branches, even small ones. They had to chop everything to a strictly defined size. Actually, the gentleman from the group who noticed this, Josh, this thing with the fresh chopped wood, he himself makes statues out of this geopolymer mixture. He casts them, so he puts all kinds of ingredients inside. He experiments all the time, so he is dealing with similar mixtures on a daily basis. He immediately noticed that the chopped fresh wood is very well mixed throughout the layer. And this is not just somewhere at one site. These are very thick layers, and there are hills made of them. And then you travel 20 or 100 kilometers away, then you see another hill made of the very same mixture. This definitely doesn't look like the work of natural chaotic forces.
Another thing which I found puzzling, at least as long as uh, one believes in the mainstream story of how this rock was formed, are the peculiar color patterns. Supposedly these colorful lines were uh, formed by the fall down of uh, various types of particles of this ash from the alleged uh, volcano eruption. So the particles grouped themselves in the air and then fell down with different speed or somehow, I don't know how they organized themselves according to the official version, but they managed to form layers of distinct color. Well, I would have expected everything to be much more horizontal if that was the case, but in a short while we'll get to the strata folds as well. Before that I want to explain what bothers me actually with the coloring. Let's take as an example this colorful circle. Here, where the layers themselves are strictly horizontal, it becomes clear that this circle is not just a play of the colors of the layers. And on the top of that, it uh, passes through two neighboring layers. In addition, I'm not very happy with the penguinic explanation of these circles, which is like we are not sure what are they exactly, but we will find out in future because we cannot know everything for sure, but we know for sure what is the origin of all stone. And that's like waterproof 100% sure, although we have not seen it, nor we can reproduce it in any way, nor even prove it in any conclusive way, but we know for sure. And it's not just circles with different pigment, with different coloring. It gets much more serious. There are also these round formations within the stone. Kind of pimples or they seem to have different density. Looking at spots like this, I find it difficult to believe that just the falling particle of the ash spit by the volcano organized itself in such a colorful way, just like that in the air. Or that it was a byproduct of uh, processes which impacted the fallen ash after it fell down, uh, processes which nobody has seen but we have to believe in, while at the same time this looks exactly like something else, which the penguins don't like to mention at this particular spot, but if they see it somewhere else, at more suitable location, they will immediately identify it as stomatolite or some of his fellow chaps, a fellow microbe which lived on the bottom of the prehistoric oceans. So this is one of the friends of the Stolotomite, must be his girlfriend because it's called Stomatoporoidea. And I saw quite few formations of this type in the Tufarok, but uh, officially I guess they cannot classify them as uh, Stolotomites or other bacteria that lived in the water because they are telling us that the Tufarok was formed by the ash spilled by a volcano. And it seems that when they find such formations in the rocks uh, which should not have them, they come up with creative explanations. Like, for example, oh, this was a step of a dinosaur, and then it got filled up with another, whatever, magma rock, or if it doesn't fit their uh, type of rock, they make up a fairy tale. And then if somebody dares to question, for example, that it was exactly a dinosaur and not something else, they will use the usual trick. They will blink like wise penguins at them and ask them 
to prove that indeed there was no dinosaur stepping exactly at this point 3.4 million years ago I can tell even the date so how can you prove that there was no dinosaur but the thing is it is the person who puts forward the given theory he has the burden of providing proof that indeed there was a dinosaur and not just proclaiming it as if it is true and then giving the burden to you to prove that it is not true. That is faulty, but apparently modern men buy it. So I first heard the very name Stomato Lights after publishing this video about growing stone and it answered when I read what does the penguin science has to say about stolotomites it cleared the big doubt I, that I had this full thing with growing stones it's so obvious we have so many biologists that stare at all kinds of plants all their lives can they really be so blind? haven't they recognized that a lot of the stone has all the patterns of a growing uh, thing? So, after understanding this concept of theirs, called stomatolites and other such microbes, we understood then that the stone has been properly recognized for what it is, or what it was, growing and living organisms. And, as usual, they simply forgot to tell us about it. Growing stones remain as a small thing for the scientific circle only. Its true scale was never revealed to the public. Probably even most biologists are not aware of the scale of what is going on, although they will agree that such a thing was going on indeed. And the way such disinformation, mass disinformation in the scientific community is done is that when it occurs in a rock that they have uh, made up some other story about it that doesn't match with the microorganisms, which also is, could be a story by itself, when they find such uncomfortable examples, they just uh, make up other explanations and always the same trick. It is up to you to prove that it is wrong. And the pattern is like this. They will always try to find explanations which endorse the mechanic and dead nature of as much as possible from our surroundings to hide the main truth from us that we live in a conscious universe Everything is conscious. Even the smallest particles respond to the electromagnetic thoughts that we have. And that's why we live in an alive universe. This is what they want to hide from us by always providing explanations which make everything seem like chaotic by chance and purely driven by gross mechanical processes. Like, for example, here they will put forward such a hypothesis oh, lava must be uh, mixing with water and this must have been the result they will not suggest oh, maybe th these were stems of the plants which were uh, stone plants maybe, maybe it was not but we don't hear such hypothesis only dead hypotheses are allowed in the scientific community here they will assure us that, uh, you see, the strata must have been moving due to some faults in the earth or some differences, fluctuations in temperature or something else mechanic happened. They will never put the forward the hypothesis that the stone was growing in such a fashion. For example, here, they will tell us these faults, well, there must have been an earthquake and uh, everything broke apart and then it was covered with some other layers. They will never put forward the hypothesis, oh, maybe the engineers of our earth when they were creating it or when they were clearing like uh, the surface refashioning it for the next civilization to come maybe they were playing with the stone or maybe they were testing something 
So I did not make the Turkey and Bulgarian expeditions in uh, search of evidence about growing stone, but it turned out to be like this to a large extent. So what are the main things that I learned? I'm definitely on the right track, but uh, it is not a simple growing process, exactly like growing mushrooms all the time. Maybe sometimes it was so straightforward forward, although I can't say from sh for sure from what the mushrooms were feeding, but in the case of the mixture with the chopped wood, it seems there were other scenarios as well. It seems there was like a base mass and then these structures resembling organisms, whatever you call it, stomatolites, or it doesn't matter, maybe they were just a type of organization of this uh, shapeless mass. Like this, these mushrooms, they stand out of the softer material around them. They kind of provide support for it, besides providing some shape and support not only maybe in physical sense but also in a metaphysical sense once one starts seeing everything from the right perspective everything around as being alive then everything falls into place and it will seem very normal that everything will have some sort of biological structure or organization which will kind of manage it and will serve as a receiver and transmitter for the waves of the thought forms of the other living beings around and transmit them in its turn to the various parts of that organism or body which in the given case is the stone formation so that it can respond properly to the environment and thus take proper part, play the right game in the big theater of karma. Even if we assume, just for the argument's sake, that uh, it was all stomatolites and their friends who were basically microbes, very minute, this may seem like nothing major, but uh, even, for example, in the fields where crop grows, for example, we have many individual wheat plants which by themselves are very small, like unimportant, but it is well known and proven that they also act together as one full body and they communicate between each other, they also have feelings and transmit them to other individual plants. So even if you believe that it is, it was um, small bacteria which died and petrified, even in that case, you will have to agree at least to some extent that at least in the past, it was all one big living organism. And all that is in case that we believe in each and every detail of the stomatolite fairy tale labeled as stomatolite. It is also possible that the stones are still living. We know very, very little about the earth we walk upon. And sometimes that very same tufa stone in this very same area with the rock cuttings and all those funny protrusions, it turns into this. Which is like one-to-one -to, -one to what I've been showing even before going there in the video about growing stones. And I'm sure some people will say, but wait a minute, this uh, like snake scale like surface, isn't that erosion? Well, from what I saw with my own eyes, I must tell you, it didn't look like any erosion at all. On the red stone, I mean, it's obviously, see how crisp it is, that's not erosion. And as far as the greenish stone, this one from Turkey, which I 
film 10 examined, I mean, pay attention to spots like this one. It is so crisp. If all this was erosion, it would be smoothened like anything, but there were many such crisp edges and the overall impression is that the stone was like this and then it hardened while retained that original appearance of rising doll. To fully understand what I'm talking about, you must see all the details in this video about growing living megaliths. And now these are images from Pereperikon, the historic site in Bulgaria. I didn't go with the intention to get insights into the geological history of the region, but again, um, I saw these very same colorful circles in the stone, which again I believe is officially classified as uh, volcanic ash stone. But even if it it is not classified in such a way. It doesn't even matter because the situation is similar with many types of stone, judging from what I saw out there in the fields. Now let's visit a mini desert near the city of Varna in Bulgaria, locally called Pobitite Kamani. So officially there are two types of hypotheses about uh, the origin of these stone columns. The first one is indeed that these were prehistoric plants. And the second option that they are giving us that it is all erosion, the wind blew in special angles, in special directions, and then maybe some concretions also helped in shaping all this. But in reality, adding, adding concretions to the cocktail of theories doesn't help much because the concretions are unknown by themselves, they are not fully explained, so that means uh, trying to explain something with the help of something else which is not explained. And as far as uh, play of winds in different direction doesn't hold much water because at this particular spot it is uh, visible that the columns are already shaped as such even before the softer matter around them falls indeed uh, because of the elements. Can be seen on many other images of similar columns, which are found all over the world. Not only Turkey and Bulgaria, at other spots it's always clearly visible. The columns are already formed before the erosion grinds up the softer material around them. So, special winds blowing at special angles are not the explanation of these already preformed columns found all over the world. And other evidence from this particular site permitted the expedition in Bulgaria are these holes in the trunks of these petrified plants, which are there in all the standing columns. Apparently, that particular species which petrified had such cavities in the middle which is very common for many plants. These holes in the middle, they always run through the entire stem of the petrified plant. It's not just a bit on the top. Maybe that could have been attributed to winds blowing at funny angles, but literally drilling precise holes in columns, which are meters high, that is not the job that the winds have been doing. And after dropping the hypothesis of the wind, we are left with either plants 
or concretions which are again most likely some sort of living organism or they were and i'm going into such length about this topic because uh, afterwards i'm gonna show you that in turkey in the famous cappadocia and very large areas around it large parts of the country because we could see this as we travel from the window of the car there were these mushroomy formation maybe more formations maybe not as picturesque and vividly defined as Cappadocia but they were certainly there and it is very important for the modern man to understand that all these were living creatures maybe they can be classified even as biological beings and that will be a major milestone towards our success of finally realizing what our forefathers knew the most important thing our environment is alive everything around us is alive and it will respond to our thoughts and intentions not in some poetic sense but in the most practical and physical sense that you can put into these words in the same way as the crops in the fields they so to say read the minds of their fellow plants the entire field is like one big organism and they transmit feelings and even ideas between each other for example the idea of protecting themselves against predators and how to do it it's like an entire strategy in the same way we the humankind we interact even with the objects of our our environment which we call dead devoid of consciousness we interact with them using those same electromagnetic waves which have been proven to connect plants and of course animals even more so but the idea that we interact in the same way for example with the stone around is still very foreign to us and exactly because we are so amazingly ignorant about this most important for us thing this law of nature that's why we are turning our world into hell we allow poisonous thought forms to be placed in our consciousness by the mass media while we naively comfort ourselves that oh i don't need to agree with everything i hear or but i don't approve what i see i just see it and since i do not endorse it everything must be fine but it is not fine because we don't understand these laws of interacting with the environment at, around us we don't understand that these poisonous thought forms will harm us even if we don't like the ideas just the very fact that we project what we have heard on tv even while condemning condemning it we project it with our consciousness around us this is enough by itself to turn our world into a weird undesirable space of cruelty and sheer madness countless experiments have shown again and again if you talk if you abuse verbally a plant it will get sick or die and if you talk nicely to a plant it will thrive well and flower and yet very few people apply this wisdom in their daily life and it also works for what we call inanimate objects the famous rice experiment cooker rice divided into talk nicely to half of it adore it love it it will stay well it will look well and the other half if you abuse it verbally it will get moldy in no time it will stink and again many have heard have even done this experiment at home but how many apply this wisdom in their daily life how many of us carefully watch each and every thought and word they say consciously understanding that this will reflect in the world around
and a small curious observation about the turkey mushrooms. Do you see how they have different colors? Some are brownish and some are whitish. In the beginning I used to assume of course that the brown is just the crust and the whitish ones of course I thought would have been recently stripped by erosion. But when I was in the vicinity of uh, two such mushrooms of different color uh, touching each other, I really made the endeavor to climb and see the material of which the both mushrooms consist. And to, much to my surprise, actually the brownish below the crust, it's that pinkish stone, while the white mushroom cap is made of different material. So it seems it, the situation with growing these mushrooms is quite complicated. It's not like black and white. Because we have horizontal layers with mushrooms in them, I was uh, getting the impression at some point that there was an initial mixture and then the mushroom spawn was introduced inside and created the mushroom structures. But again, we see that there could have been considerable movement, so to say, inside this initial mixture. That's why we have uh, mushroom caps, which consist of different type of stone. Or maybe the horizontal layers are not a sign of that, that there was a pre-existing uh, mixture in which the spawn was introduced. Maybe I'm inclined to think that way because I still have a minute trust in the penguins. Maybe the mushrooms grew from where? What were they feeding on? I have no clue. But it is also possible that the horizontal layers are some sort of a grid and not exactly layers of material placed on the top of each other by volcano or by the creator engineers. I don't know. I think I will be returning to Turkey again and again because this is really, really very interesting with these uh, mushrooms. And also I'm getting the impression that this full dough rising cooking of mushrooms and stuff didn't happen that long ago. This is uh, based on the very nice and fresh chopped wood inside uh, of some of the layers. And also it is based on the rate of erosion of this tufa stone, although the members of the expedition even didn't like it when I used the word stone, it was like tufa ash around. I mean, look at this, this is really a modern construction and it's already laid barren in a couple of years. So there is no need to have uh, millions or even many thousands of years to have these picturesque picturesque valleys of Cappadocia shaped by the erosion to some extent in the way they are shaped. Most likely all this dough and fermentation took place in recent times, which doesn't mean that the earth is young. I don't think it is young. I think it is very, very old, but it is uh, being refashioned very often to suit the needs of the civilizations which are about to come and to clean up the old stuff, possibly even recycle it. Maybe that chopped wood is simply recycled material from the bygone times, possibly even before Atlantis and Lemuria, civilizations of which we don't know even the name. <laughs> But I think that the most convincing clue that the mushroom exists in their mushroom shape even before they get revealed by the erosion of the neighboring material, look at these round stems which are already clearly distinguishable. In a couple of decades maybe they will be fully revealed mushrooms. Do you notice how the future mushroom stems already have higher density and the filling material around them is uh, visibly more destroyed by the erosion 
than the stronger stems which will remain even after the fill up material around them is carried away by the rain. Future stems are not being simply spared by the rain because they have a cap on. As you can see the cap on the top is somewhat broken and still the remaining stems below it stand strong although they don't have a cap protect them from the rain and this full story that they're telling us you know there is a cap and it protects the stem below so that uh, uh, kinds of shelters it from the rain and so the stem is formed i mean what kind of nonsense is this because the mushrooms are huge enormous how can that small cap on the top protect from the rain this very tall stem? This is preposterous or protected from the wind? This is as silly as the hypothesis that the winds blow in special ways there to form these things. Well, during our stay we experienced some pretty strong winds exactly in Cappadocia exactly while walking amongst the mushrooms and I can assure you that the winds there as everywhere else in the world blow in straight lines so I don't know what kind of winds the penguins are trying to talk about but maybe some sort of miniature tornadoes that are not here now but they were there in the past they came shaped all these funny things and went away in both Turkey and Bulgaria we noticed also numerous uh, round inclusions in the stone including clearly shaped balls and also veins in the stone and of course they all have official explanations as well but when I looked into detail what are these explanations all about they are not very convincing or they cannot apply to most of what we saw while on the other hand if we see them from the perspective of the spores so to say of the culture for preparing the stone mixture so to say and the veins if we see them as the veins of living beings the stones being the creatures then everything we saw will fall into place but not least a curious site south of the Bulgarian city of Kurgeli it is called Kostinurkite which means the tortoises although to most people it looks like something man-made to me it looked rather natural to be more precise it looked mostly natural and yet here and there certain features would make us wonder and that is sign that something maybe we don't understand fully about it and sure enough just a couple of meters away by chance or maybe not by chance around and on a small hill there are motorbike tracks single tracks And then some 50 or 100 meters away there were a couple of other quite long motorbike tracks and possibly many other buried by soil. Maybe all these paths for animals are buried tracks. This area in particular looks very suspicious to me because I know from Turkey 
that this is exactly how buried tracks look like. History is not just a record of the bygone events, and that's why in the bygone times when people were still wise, it was a field for shamans and not just record keepers. Because the concept that we have about where do we come from defines to large extent the way we will view our own selves. It defines how we answer questions like who are we? the humans, and what are we doing here on Earth anyway? In the same way, geology is not a field of study primarily meant to categorize dull rocks. The geology of the old times was again a field of study for the shamans, who knew how to communicate with the plants, animals, and even the rocks whom we naively consider dead. masters bless mankind and especially those who are curious and brave enough to inquire into the real history and the real geology the way they used to be really really long time ago when the forefathers of the penguins were still monkeys and our forefathers were magicians capable of interdimensional journeys to the worlds beyond <laughs> 